brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. <laughs> Morning. Oh, God. Oh, what are you doing in my room? Oh, oh my Lord. It's nice in here. Oh, jeez. Have you decorated? I, well, yeah. What, are we just doing the show from here? Yeah, why not? All right. Move over, look. Uh, it's, uh, oh, it's warm. Uh, yeah. Uh, Is that you? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mornings at the cabin. Wheeler and Ollie with you on your Thursday morning. Uh, the reviews are in. Apparently, Yellowknife likes cannabis because 30 kilos, done and gone. So new new stuff on order. This is what I'm hearing. Is this is this what you're hearing as well? Uh, so the the thirty kilos is across the NWT. Oh, okay. And and I, it's not all quite gone. Like Norman Wells, apparently they just weren't interested. Quiet day, in Norman Wells. Yesterday. Really? Yeah. All right. Uh, Smith sold out of a bunch of stuff. Yep. Yellowknife sold out of a bunch of stuff. New stuff today though. So oh, good. different stuff as oh, well. Very good. Uh, review of the uh, so so the uh, banana split that I apparently bootlegged for you. <laughs> you said apparently on video. <laughs> Why did bootleg for me? I'm not actually, I'm not under the age of majority. Well, and also, like, you haven't actually paid me anything. That's true. So, Let's as, be long very as, clear about as that. long as we don't do that, then we won't be in Oh, I see. As majority. long as you don't compensate exactly me in any right. shape or form. That's exactly right. You're buying lunch and you know you are. <laughs> How was yes, it? Yes, I am. Um, uh, well, I will say this, uh, Ollie, that I did uh, exercise my, uh, my legal right, and it was all right. Is all right. Like yeah. I mean, it was. Yeah, I mean, I saw a lot of reviews yesterday of people on online saying, you know, it was it wasn't that great. But I think that's more like, oh, the government's got cannabis now. Let's, oh yeah, it's probably terrible. And there's a new way to kick the government. Now yeah. you can bash the government's cannabis. Yeah, exactly. Add I it mean, to the list of ways you complain about the government. Poor old government, just trying to do what's what's best for the people and still gets slagged off. Well, I th- it does have to be said. I don't know how quickly I can get this. The some of the descriptions are of- lovely. I, I on the government store. If you go to the yeah. if you go to the shop. Yeah, I don't uh, know who wrote those, but N- they're pretty awesome. NTLCC.ca yes. if you're uh if you're wondering. And and first of all, it's just it's just strange to see the government selling things that are called alien dog. <laughs> uh, but, but headband. But they are. So so yeah, you could go to any of these uh any of these different uh items on the government store and they all come with these these beautiful little uh Descriptions. So I, I don't even know how to pronounce some of the words in this one, but I, I want to know who wrote these. Did someone at the GNWT write this? Marrying strains from California and Afghanistan, Kanaka alien dog is a potent Ontario-grown indica that appeals to experienced tokers with mm. sparkling trichomes and auburn pistols. All right. Its bright <laughs> and dense buds crumble easily, producing a woody, soil-rich aroma mm. reminiscent of Canada's sprawling forests. This is wonderful stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, Back in your box, government of the <laughs> Northwest Territories. There's another one that Wait, says prominent you... terpenes of limonene. limonene. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss out the good part? Car- Caryophyllene uh, and hum- humo- humoline. I don't even know how to pronounce. Where's those. the other one? There's a good one in here somewhere that's absolutely stunning. It... I don't consider myself a connoisseur, really. I mean, the, what we got, the banana split, had a 15.2 percent THC, which is not bad. It's pretty. It's pretty average. I mean, if you were to go back to the 60s, you were more like six and seven apparently um but now we're in like 15 so like what i was hearing uh from a report from a from a uh a, a cannabis producer on cbc yesterday yes uh was that 17 is the threshold 17 and up is strong okay so 15 is kind of in the middle and it, yeah put you in the couch bursting with bright citrus flavor and a yeah. staple of any sativa am i pronouncing that correctly that's right enthusiast Grail Headband is a cross of two favorites, OG Kush and Sour Diesel, yep. while its tart undertones will win over even the newest comer to cannabis. <laughs> Not sure that's how you decline that word. Nope. Its distinct aroma of diesel yep. adds an earthly quality yeah, with a, a robust song. finish. Not its distinct song. aroma of diesel. That's right. Who goes shopping being like, you know what I want? I want something that's got a really stink of diesel. Mm. That'll make me relax at the end of a hard day. Well, you know that cocaine's made with diesel gas, right? I haven't, but, uh, as you can imagine, no, I didn't. <laughs> it is. You've never seen that video where they're making it in the jungle? It's pretty amazing. No, no. Why, why do people want diesel inside themselves? I don't think they want it. It's just they want the other thing. Well, that's a, it's being listed here as an well, actually actively... aroma of diesel. Oh, okay, it's fine. Actual diesel. Okay, fine. It's like you know, ketchup flavored chips. They've never been near actual ketchup. They've just been doused with chemicals to smell it, like it. Exactly right. Or a fine scotch. There's a scotch called Ardbeg Ugadol whose tasting notes say. Uh, leather and fire, or charcoal. 
All right. Leather. All right. It all tastes right. like a belt. People are strange. Yeah, people's palates are more uh, more advanced and more sophisticated than yours. That's all. Sure. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. Mornings at the Cabin, Wheeler, Ollie, now Lecter with you. Um, I was mentioning to Ollie that, uh, at Lecter that a uh, little sluggish this morning. A little bit. <laughs> rough day after. Well, not a, it's not rough. I mean, like I said, I wasn't, I'm not feeling nauseous or I don't have a headache or anything. Just, well, why little, would you? Just a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, usually on a Thursday morning for me, it's, it's all the wings from trivia night uh, that I know. are causing usually, the issue. Yeah, yeah one, our, one, of our, one of us is usually not here. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> 20, it was 24 20, wings digesting somewhere. Uh, it was like, 24. It was only 18 this year. No, Those kidding. are really salty, by the oh way. My God. I don't know Holy. what they're doing. Yeah, you weren't salting. kidding. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, well, they're salting. But too much. Too much, Ollie. Um, so, yeah, I had to, that last little batch I got for free, um, I told her not to put any salt on them. And they didn't. There was plenty. On, on those orders? Yeah, I know. This is riveting, by the way. Um, Ollie, yes, you're looking at me. I I, I thought you were going to pronounce something. You, you pronounce look like a man something. with a topic. Um, uh, Any pronouncements this morning? Pronouncements? Any... Um, I don't know. Uh, vitamin. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. No, it vitamin. isn't. No, it isn't. That's what I thought. Vitamin. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so, yes, I mean, it's it was a fairly successful. Uh, successful. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. You guys go. So you that's, guys go. <laughs> that's how cannabis works. <laughs> There's one of my pronouncements. A mispronouncement. That's why it was illegal for so long. That's yeah. what they were afraid of. Because they, they were afraid, afraid it would be so successful. Just yeah. So sex everywhere. Yeah, that's sex that's sex now a word. Everywhere. I've got to write that word on the board. So yeah. now we know that you know, to define a night where. You, How are you going to spell that? It's going to be S U C S E X. Sex sex. Yeah, it's successful. Yeah, and that and that is a night when you were relatively sure that nothing was going to happen, and you're just sort of like hanging out, and you're like, yeah, maybe I'll order a pizza, and just like go to bed, and like, yeah. the other half's probably not that interested, and then oh, what do you know? Pleasant surprise. Yeah. So sex. <laughs> <laughs> this is. This is going down the tubes very quickly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what said. the government was thinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, coming decision. up this weekend. Coming up this weekend. Let's get back on track. For goodness' sake, focus up, guys. Focus. All up. right, Ollie. No more waking and baking for you. Um, coming up this weekend. All you need is love. Friday and Saturday. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, but uh, we just we did just announce the. Well, we announced it a little while ago, but we've uh, really started to let people know this week that we are going to be streaming on the Saturday and. Proceeds from both shows will be going to Clyde and Terry Lee Wetson and their young boy Jackson, who is on the list for a, a heart transplant. He's almost a year. I think he's November 9th. Uh, he he turns a year old and right. he spent uh, 95% of his life in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're really pulling for them and we want to fill up their coffers as much as we possibly can. So if you guys are planning on heading out to the show... That's what we'll be raising money for. We'll be taking donations at the show. Yeah. Uh, we'll also link you up with the uh, GoFundMe page. We can take donations there as well. Um, and if you don't make it in, tune into the cabin. There you go. Don't He's make it in. You'll hear some Saturday. amazing bands, including Pitt, who is probably the hottest band in Yellowknife right now. I don't know. They played a bunch of wedding gigs. They're pretty good. Well, they played the they played the Bush's Buds last weekend, and apparently just rocked the house. That's what you heard? That's what I heard. Yeah. Okay. Is that not what you heard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard good things. Good things. No, no, they're yeah. great. Uh, so you're going to hear a lot of great bands. I think uh, Dad Rock tonight will have some acoustic uh, mm -hmm. some, uh, some uh, acoustic uh, sets yep. or some acoustic Beatles tunes that they played uh, uh, this week. So that'll be awesome. They're going to be playing. Uh, there's a band, uh, Brie O'Keefe yeah. and, uh, and Friends. I can't remember their band name. I'm terrible. Uh, are going to be playing as well. And that's who... Uh, uh, is playing on the Dad Rock Show, I think, as well. So, um, so if you never heard that. of these Beatles kids, yeah, now's the time know. to get into them. Uh, off kilter, caterwauling. Um, so all you need is love coming up this weekend. Um, Saturday, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to this. I mean, Ollie, we're gonna figure out 100 percent whether or not we can do this. I'm pretty sure we can. Oh yeah, we're fine. We're good. Oh, we're good. We're yeah, good. We're good. Hey. Yeah. Hey, all right. <laughs> so we'll be streaming it. So if you can't make the show, uh, it's going to be two great shows uh, this weekend. No tickets. I keep on being told to remind people that there are no tickets because we keep on being asked. Uh, no tickets. Just taking a donation at the door. Suggested a donation of 25 bucks. And like I said, all proceeds. All proceeds going to uh, Clyde and Tara Lee Wetson and their, their young boy Jackson. So we are very much looking forward to that this weekend. So come out if you can. And if you can't, tune in to Cabin Radio. Mornings at the Cabin.
the podcast. Mornings at the cabin. Wheeler, all elected with you. It's a Thursday morning. It is October 18th. We are just under two weeks away from Halloween. And uh, we have discovered, much to our chagrin, that uh, Ollie has no idea how to carve a pumpkin. Ollie, <laughs> is this true? We had an incident yesterday. Oh, God. that's not how you're supposed to use a pumpkin. And no, this wasn't American Pie. And American Pumpkin. So there's a workshop <laughs> that I run every Wednesday with uh, kids from the NWT Literacy Council. A pumpkin carving workshop. And yesterday it was. That is exactly what we did. We we did it you know, for radio. So we were talking about it as we were doing it. Nice. And I got all the kids set up. We had a bunch of pumpkins. They're just in that little kitchen over there. Uh, you go see it, by the way. They did a great job. And I got them started. Uh, Karen, who was from the NWT Literacy Council, was running a little bit late. And so I was like, oh, I'm, I got this. Whatever. I've carved a pumpkin before. <laughs> so, like, here you go, kids. Here's, like, some implements. And just have at it. Like, carve a face. And we're, they're about 10 minutes into it when Karen turned up. And Karen wandered into the kitchen. She was like, huh. Um, should they not have, like, like emptied out the pumpkin first? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? Aren't they just hollow? And I, as, <laughs> God is my, as God is my witness, <laughs> I thought that there was nothing in pumpkins. <laughs> I well, there's no money in them. That's for sure. I have carved a pumpkin once before, about seven or eight years ago, and I'd completely forgotten the whole process. And Karen's like, "Well, what about the seeds?" And I was like, "Oh, yeah." And and so Karen very quickly took over and started like showing the kids how to carve the lid and things like that. And the kids were all like, "Huh? Why didn't the weird British guy mention any of this?" <laughs> uh, like, oh, because the kids are all from like there's uh, three three were from China and one is from. Oh, why am I black? I think he might be from Colombia. Oh, um, okay. Mexico. I forget now. Uh, South America somewhere. And and so none of them had taken yeah. part before. So this is all new to them. And, and so, to you. And apparently to me. <laughs> and so, yeah, I had to just sort of shrug to the kids and be like, oh, I'm an immigrant as well. What do you want? <laughs> I'm an immigrant as well. <laughs> You've heard it here first, folks. Immigrants cannot carve pumpkin. Maybe, well, they the, can. maybe the pumpkin uh, game just changed that yeah, much. That's right. You said it was about eight years since the last time you'd. No, no. A you've always had to empty out a pumpkin. You, you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to confirm that that has never changed. They have always had guts <laughs> yeah. inside of them. Yeah, real guts. It does. It does explain why everyone seemed to be having a little more difficulty at the start. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we got through that in the course of two hours. They only had two hours to go from start to finish, and I thought they did a, a fantastic job. Uh, a little bit closer to Halloween, we'll post up the photos of those pumpkins. You can see uh, what pumpkins that have been rescued by a woman who knows what she's doing <laughs> look like. And you, we also have got a little radio special as well, so you'll actually be able to hear the, the audio version in which I believe the mic was rolling when it was pointed out to me that... Uh, I, I had things slightly wrong. Well done. So we've uh, we've explored in past Halloween specials how that you know growing up you didn't have Halloween yeah. in the UK. Not not really. The, my abiding memory of Halloween in the UK is I would have been about eight years old, and my mum woke me up <laughs> to point out a pumpkin <laughs> that she'd carved and put in our backyard, <laughs> and I, in a like still three quarters asleep. Like, she led me to the bedroom window that overlooked the bay. I was like, look, look at the pumpkin. And I just groggily looked out at it. <laughs> I remember this part clear as day, even though I was asleep at the time. And I turned to her and I said, don't worry, mum, it'll be okay. <laughs> and then went back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is, honest to God, literally the only thing I can remember about Halloween as a kid. Yeah. I'm sure maybe there was a little bit more to it than that. But I don't ever remember dressing up. I don't ever remember really carving a pumpkin. I feel like I'm going to hear about this from family members. But I don't remember doing it. I just remember that one <laughs> pumpkin that my mum was really proud of that I thought must have been attacking the house. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It made its way into the backyard. It yeah. was going to come for the back don't, door. Don't worry, mum. You worry, did mom. what you had to do. It's going to be okay. I'm a fiercely <laughs> protective eight-year-old. Oh, of course, <laughs> I then went back to bed. Yeah, yeah. Like, so it'll be okay, but someone else will so figure it out. fiercely is a strong yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. I, I, moderately I, protected. I, aspirational, aspirational. Yeah, but ha, but had had she taken the the guts out, or had she just kind of just stabbed stabbed him. a pumpkin a few times? I, I <laughs> Look what I did. I feel like she knows what she's doing. Okay, I Babs, feel like... give us a call eight six seven. All right, well, see like she's already here. She's already here. Oh good. Uh, Facebook message. Uh, I, I did I apparently I carved that pumpkin. <laughs> no, you carved that. <laughs> but I was eight. I don't remember the carving. But you remember uh, but, I didn't, waking but up. I did not dress up. This has been this has been okay. confirmed. Uh, she also puts in capital letters "guts out." 
Guts out. Guts out. Okay. <laughs> That's not, not the ordinary message what receives from Mod's mother. Falls guts out, guts out. out. Um, I think you and I, uh, and possibly Lecter, should have a little car- carving contest here on the morning show. Oh. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Why not? That's right. In between songs, we'll just carve up a pumpkin, see who comes up with the best one. It's going to be me. And remember, <sighs> guts out. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. More uh, more cabin radio in the mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, Lecter with you. What? Here's a little more. Here's a little more if you'd like it. I don't know. I mean, more? more? You more. want some more? <laughs> Boy? Uh, that's, what we, that's what the morning show needs more of. More Oliver references. Right? Gotta pick a pocket or two, boy. Uh. <laughs> You gotta pick a pocket or two. One, two, three. In this life, one thing counts. Anyway, sorry, what? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's great. Oliver, Oliver. What about Les Miserables? Uh, no. 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 No Les Mis. No. No Les Mis. Master of the house. No. Isn't worth the No. Spit. Comforter, philosopher, and lifelong. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give over my my my. Give up my actor card at this at this point. Lay Miz is the worst thing I've ever. No, heard get out, go. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Terrible stuff. It's right up there with I Rent. <laughs> like Lay Miz and Rent are fighting oh, it out for the worst uh, thing ever made. Cloud. That's enough. That's uh, enough. I've never seen Lay Miz. A man goes to You've jail seen... for his life no. of stealing bread. That's uh, stupid. <laughs> well, he's set in America, isn't it? No. Yeah, exactly. Um, and no, it's it's just like I've seen Lay Miz at least ten times. That's nice. At least wow. ten times. It's it's fantastic. Scott, ignore him. It's right. fantastic. It's it not. is it is easily the best musical I've ever it produced. Is. Really? Yeah. It it is graphic. Like every single song no. will live with you for the rest of your life. That's not huh. true. <laughs> that sounds like a review that Andrew Lloyd Webber penned himself. No, Les Mis <laughs> is is without doubt the masterpiece. Pretty sure of, Cats oh, musical pretty sure masterpiece Cats is up there. Nah. Cats? Cats, yeah. Ah, no, Cats is yeah. terrible. Phantom. Okay. Phantom is great. Come yeah, on. Phantom's in second place. Cats is in third. West Side Story. Joseph and the Amazing Tech. Oh, you know, that's not coach. so bad either. Lion King. Lion King's good. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the other one? We're just naming musicals now. Book of, Book no one's seen any of these. Book of Mormon. I s- Book of I've Mormon. still yeah, never yeah, seen fantastic. Book of Mormon. Which I've, is like... I've only heard it. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you this right now. Not a fan of Hamilton. I, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. I'm like the only one who's like, this is like the worst. Like, I I get that it's like it, they're they're rapping and stuff, but it's just like this is like rap that you wrote in your first year college. And you're just like, this is really good. It's so like, it's not. Though. Everybody, welcome to Kevin Radio's <laughs> Mornings with Kevin. One highbrow break of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the Broadway musical review on Kevin Radio, brought to you by <laughs> nobody because nobody wants to hear this. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Lay Miz is just overrated. Oh, it's the best, though. I mean, what have you seen the movie version? Yes. What did you think about that? Um, yeah, it's about the same as the musical. It's, it's not that good. I wasn't a massive fan of the, uh, the well, it's movie. it's hard. I mean, what they did, how they made it, usually how they make musicals, right, is that they, you know, they, they, they lip sync, right, mm. and then they add, the, add the, add the recording later so right. somebody has a chance to actually, you know, get in there. And, but in, in, in this, they filmed it much more like a musical on stage Mm. where they had them mic'd up and they sang live. Right. And Russell Crowe apparently didn't know that and just just kind of sang whatever he sang. And he's awful. I mean, Hugh Jackman's amazing. He's amazing, but he's amazing in everything. Hugh Jackman is amazing in everything. He's just Hugh Jackman, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, you just just would. Hugh Jackman. Speaking of Hugh Jackman, actually, and musicals, did you see The Greatest Showman? The P.T. Barnum movie? Yeah, I don't like that movie. I didn't like it either. Yeah, you know why? Sucked. It, glamor- it sucked. It also glamorizes <laughs> the life of a, a guy who enslaved people for entertainment. So, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Well, and you know what? I, I was I was kind of excited for it because I had actually just recently read the book that it was based on. Yeah. The kind of like the, you know, the life of P.T. Barnum. And uh, yeah. Was it a good one or a bad? Was it one of those P.T. Barnum ones? No, it was. Uh, ever, or one of those one of those P.T. Barnum books where it's like, eh, he's kind of a terrible person. It, it really it balanced it really, yeah. really well, um, because I mean, you look back through American history and and he's without question one of the greatest showmen ever. How he achieved that, <laughs> certainly not exactly ideal and would not be tolerated today. No. 
but it but this book was very it explored both sides it didn't paint him as this great this yeah. great individual you know this this angelic person who you but that's know. what musicals do musicals rarely deal with well, the and, and, and i didn't know it was going to be a musical oh yeah going in i i you know assumed it was just a movie and then you know they go into the opening number and pt barnum's dancing around with his children who he like in real life probably never actually saw <laughs> never and saw, i was just like horribly abused i was like oh no oh, <laughs> oh no. no what have i got myself <laughs> this, into <laughs> this is not gonna be good <laughs> and it was not no it was not a no, good movie it's not a good movie so he i mean hugh jackman was fine for, yeah. for what he was they were he's always trying good. to achieve he's always good but uh kate is telling me to watch the the version with Wolverine Lecter. That's uh, I'm, I'm guessing she's talking about Lebo's right. I think she's telling Lecter to watch the version with Wolverine. Oh, I see. Watch oh. the version with Wolverine. I don't think I comma, don't think, Lecter. I don't think Hugh Jackman is playing Scott Wolverine as Lecter. Wolverine. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Very <laughs> different. Cool. <laughs> much Interesting. As I would, much as I would, Interesting universe. <laughs> one, one day we're going to try this out. I'm going to contact Hugh Jackman and say, "Look, can you just come in and and do Lecter <laughs> one one day?" And it's like you could like. Oh take, man. You could take the day off, you, and we'll just have we'll just have Hugh Jackman you're gonna, as Scott you're do this one day. He well, would do wait. me better than I could do me. That <laughs> well, sounded, fair uh, enough. That sounded fair explicit. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, and our one Broadway review break just goes down the tube. <laughs> Way to go, Scott. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Here I am. I just wanted to talk about how terrible Les Mis is. This is why we need Hugh Jackman playing. <laughs> <laughs> the Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Hey, it was early. What do you want from us? Mornings at the Cabin. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter with you on your Thursday morning. Delo or no Delo went down yesterday. We had about 63, 65 entrants or something like that. Yeah, at least something like that. 43 of you got it right. And the answer was Delo. D-Lo, everybody. Right. Yeah, we were, you go down sort of, uh, down that initial, like, access road into d and then about, yeah, 100, 100 yards down there, swing a right. Yep. And uh, we're just on that little road there. There you go. Uh, it looks a little bit like, could be the woodyard. Could, could be. be somewhere around there. Yep. Fair few people led astray. Led astray. <laughs> yeah, flip a coin. But 43 people got it right. It That's was right. d And so, we need to draw yes. a d or no d winner. Now, the way this always works is I have the list in front of me. We've got 43 to choose from. I've randomly assigned a number to everybody. Lecter picked it last time, which means Ooh. you're going to pick it this time. You cannot see the list. I can't. I cannot see the list. And we have not met each other before. Is that right? Um, uh, also, let them know what's up for grabs there, Ollie. Yeah, it took uh, Erasmus and Power, proud sponsors of d or no d uh, There is a selection of Tooks. So you can win yourself yes. a Took if your name is read out. And then all we do is we pass that name on to Erasmus and you stop by their store and you get to pick whichever took from the set you want. I think I got to go with the blue one with the, with the yellow knife on it's it. It's pretty funky with that lovely little yellow knife knife on it. it yes. just look, Yeah, those tooks are fantastic. Absolutely. And you get one for free if Mr. Wheeler selects your number. So you That's have right. numbers between 1 and 43. Including 1 from. and 43. Including 1 and 43. I'll always say it. It's actually between 0 and 44. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, my my lucky number is is not lucky number, but my favorite number is twenty four. But I'm not going to go with that. Okay, that's okay. not you, Amy Mercury. So you are sorry. you are ruled out. <laughs> and I'm not going to go with thirty one. Uh, okay, sorry, Kelly McLaughlin. <laughs> okay, I got to stop. I love thirty eight. Thirty eight. Oh, that's the one. That's actually the one. Tammy Allison. Tammy, Tammy Allison. Allison. Well done, Tammy. You are the winner. A took is coming your way. We will get in touch with Erasmus Power. We'll let them know to keep one back for you. Stop by the store if you if you don't live in Yellow Life, then you're stuffed. No, uh, get get in touch with us and we'll figure that out for you. But I'm pretty sure you're local, and we'll uh, we'll get you hooked up with a took. Tammy Allison wins. Dealer or no dealer. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca.